Hi everyone, this is Ron Kroshkero with Neowin and today we are taking a look at the recently announced Oppo Find X2 Pro. So this is announced yesterday and it's coming out in early May. It's a flagship phone with a flagship price to match, so it's gonna cost 1200 euro when it releases. It's not gonna be available in the United States uh, directly from Oppo anyways, you can probably find a way to get it there. And so as a flagship phone, it's got uh, Snapdragon's uh, Qualcomm's Snapdragon 865 chipset, of course. It supports both non standalone and standalone 5G. And, um, you know, it's top, top tier performance, of course. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. You can kind of see that uh, without the reflectiveness of that golden thing there. And in terms of uh, hardware, that's Almost it. There's of course the battery, which is 4,260 milliamp hours. So it's a decently sized battery. It's not the biggest I've seen, but it's most likely big enough for anyone. You see a lot of 4,000 milliamp hour batteries or so. So that's not far off from that. And in terms of what's inside, that's mostly it. We're gonna take a look at the rest of the phone, though. So we're gonna take out that box here. Which is beautiful, by the way. It's got this beautiful gold, um, blue gold glow to it. Um, around this takes a lot to come off. So there you go. So it's got this beautiful sort of glow, uh, blue glow around it, uh, with the light and that golden lettering, that triangle pattern that also looks really really cool. It just feels premium, uh, as soon as you look at the box. Then that triangle pattern is repeated here on this booklet container thingy. So you move that out of the way. So now we have the phone here. Just gonna try, I can't actually pull it up. Okay, there we go. So pull that out. Let's just take a look at what's inside the rest of the box. This comes off, you see the earbuds here, the wired earbuds with USB type C. So the this does not have headphone jack, so this is the only way you can connect the earbuds. They do look nice though. And then that's the charging cable and some alternative uh, earbud tips if you need them and then this is a absolutely massive charger there it is enormous of course but it it does that for a reason because this is a 65 watt charger this is i think the fastest char fastest charger uh, of a smart a smartphone has right now uh it might be tied with xiaomi uh some of their models too but this is huge it's kind of heavy too and 65 watts is the same as you see on some laptop chargers. So this is really, really fast. It can charge the Find X2 Pro in like from 0% to 100% in 38 minutes. And from what I've seen, it's also from 0% to 25% in five minutes. So if you're in a pinch, you're about to leave home or something and you have nothing, just five minutes to get you going for a good while. So that's very impressive. But let's take a look at the phone itself. So we have it here wrapped in the plastic still. I haven't already unwrapped it before, but that's why it's messed up. But <laughs> let's just do that again. And so there are two models of the Find X2 Pro. You got either the black ceramic model or what I got, the orange vegan leather model. So this back plate here is completely covered in vegan leather or faux leather or whatever you want to call it. And it is incredibly soft. I love touching this thing. It just feels really, really nice in the hand. Uh, it's got this metal plate here for the, um, the Apple logo. Again, it, it, it feels different than having just that ceramic black with the Apple logo underneath that transparent panel. It just feels really, really, this feels premium. It feels nice in the hand. It looks very distinctive. It's just, it's different than having a ceramic uh, back panel. And then, of course, we have this enormous camera bump. We'll get to that in a little bit. Let's just go around the phone real quick. That's the power button with that uh, beautiful green little highlight there. The Oppo Reno Z I reviewed last year also had that. And I think it's a good way to like give it uh, just a little more pop. You know, it's not, it, it looks a little different this way. Over on the top, just one microphone there for recording. You can see the design is kind of like concave. Here, uh, the last time I saw this was on the Nubia Z20, so that's certainly different. It's a thick phone, which is why they have room to, to do that kind of thing. It's a pretty thick phone and a heavy one at that. Anyways, um, 
volume rocker there and on the bottom pretty unusual thing for me uh the sim card tray is on the bottom i've never seen that before another microphone usb type c for charging and a bottom firing speaker even though you do get stereo sound here the the speaker the earpiece here is amplified so like i was saying it is a thick phone but even for its thickness it feels really heavy it feels dense it's definitely a significant phone and now we're just going to take a look at the cameras here so this is a triple camera setup. We see phones with more cameras these days, so that the number is not what's impressive about it. But you do get two 48 megapixel cameras. So you have the main sensor, which I believe is this one, and the wide angle sensor, which is this one. And it's impressive because that main sensor, uh, it's a 48 megapixel camera, but it's not the same sensor we've seen in a lot of phones that have come out in the past two years or so, where they have a 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor. What this has is the IMX 689, and the major difference there is the sensor size and then the size of the pixels themselves. So each individual pixel of those 48 megapixels is 1.12 micron, and that's significantly bigger than the 0.8 micron that we saw on the IMX 586. And because it still combines the four pixels into one by default, you're going to get 2.24 micron pixels. That's a a very big size for a pixel and it's gonna get, mean that you get more um, light from your pictures and it's gonna get you know better on light performance and uh, then the wide angle sensor is also 48 megapixels and that's the one that's using the IMX 586 we've seen before but this time it's a longer wide angle and it's also used for macro shots so if you if you're gonna take pictures of very up close subjects having that high pixel count it's probably going to be really interesting for uh, the quality of those shots. And finally, you have the telephoto lens. This is a periscope lens, and I thought this trend was dying out because we saw a couple of phones like that uh, at the beginning of 2019. You had the Oppo Reno um, 10X Zoom, and then you had the, the, the Huawei P30 Pro. They both had that telephoto lens with the periscope positioning. So that means the, the lens is uh, not just... Uh, going down, it's usually sideways, so it get, gets more space between the lenses to zoom in. And uh, it, it allows for 10x hybrid zoom and 60x digital zoom, so it's not 100x like the Samsung uh, Galaxy S20 Ultra, but it is still uh, a lot of zoom and it's probably more than you'd like to do, anyways, because 60 times zoom is gonna look weird. Probably, I actually haven't tested it, so uh, I can't comment on that uh, personally yet. So you do get that very high-end uh, camera setup. I'm very excited for that main sensor there. The fact that you, they're using a customized sensor. It's got on-pixel, omnidirectional autofocus. So it's not just using a couple of pixels to try to focus the, the shot. It's going to use all of the pixels. And it's gonna, that's going to help the shot focus quick, more quickly and hopefully more accurately. So you get really good focus out of your shots. And the things are going to look really sharp. And for video, there's also a bunch of stuff for video here. You got 10-bit um, 10-bit 10 10 recording, live HDR, uh, optical video stabilization for both pictures and, and photos. And that's going to work for both the main camera and the periscope lens. And, and also night mode, which is now Oppo's Ultra Night Mode 3.0, also works for both the main camera and the telephone lens. So if you're going to zoom in 60 times, you also get that super night mode and all that zoom distance and that should be interesting to see how well that works at night time so there's a lot of interesting stuff about this camera that i'm really excited to try i've taken a couple of shots with it not a lot uh i really haven't had the chance to use it that much but the samples i got look really promising but of course we'll have to test that uh, in the long term so over from the cameras, you're going to switch to the display, which is another big focus on the, of this phone. And uh, by the way, there's a punch on card out. Let's just get that out of the way. That's a 32 megapixel, megapixel front facing camera. And we have this enormous 6.7 inch QHD plus 120 hertz display here. So I'm just going to unlock that. Whoops. That was, uh, can I do that? Okay. That took a while. That usually works better. Uh, so we have this massive 6.7 inch display, it is huge, 
but it is it is also beautiful with this wallpaper i said here this is the first font wallpaper that comes up it's it looks amazing i don't know if video video can do it justice but it looks so good just looking at it it's beautiful and so uh it's a big deal because it has that qhd plus 120 hertz refresh rate and it can do both of those things at the same time so there was a bit of talk about the samsung galaxy s20 family having 120 hertz qhd but you couldn't do both of those things at once if you set the the refresh rate to 120 hertz it will lower the resolution to um 1080p so full hd plus in this case uh it will be set by default for auto select on both things both resolution and refresh rate but you can set it to the maximum on both things at the same time so you can have a qhd 120 hertz display all the time that will probably kill your battery really quickly but you can do it if you want to or you can just leave it on auto select and it will adapt to your needs uh, a little better in addition to have that to having that uh, 120 hertz refresh rate there is a chip inside this that's uh, from a company called pixelworks i've mentioned them a few times before and it enables what they're calling the o1 ultra vision engine and what this does is that it can do two things it can do hdr conversion so if you have a, if you're watching sdr content you can upscan that or up convert that to hdr and then because this is a higher end chip it can also do frame interpolation and so if you have a a video if you're watching a video on youtube or netflix that's recorded at 30 frames per second what this is going to do is it gonna it's going to take every frame and for every frame you have it's going to add another one that's that's an in between be, between the first frame and the following frame and it's going to make that video smoother and it's going to convert 30 frames per second into 60 frames per second or in some apps 60 frames per second to 120 frames per second and it's just going to deliver that extra smoothness in those videos and that should look very nice too. Again, I haven't tested this yet. I have seen that SDR conversion to HDR before. I personally haven't seen a huge difference in it. Maybe it wasn't the best display to showcase it at the time. But I uh, that inter frame interpolation, I've seen that in action. Um, at MWC 2019, I, I met with Pixelworks and they showed, whoops, I, and they showed me that. And it looks really, really impressive. And so that's going to be a very interesting display. And on top of those things, the resolution and the HDR and, and the high refresh rate, you get high color accuracy. Uh, Oppo says out of the box, you're going to get 0 0.8 JNCD color accuracy. So that's for the vivid color mode, which is selected by default. But if you do go into the display settings, you can choose the color mode to cinematic and that's going to be not as punchy but it's going to be more accurate and if you if you care about those that color reproduction then this cinematic color mode gives you a 0 0.4 jncd rating so that's going to be very very color accurate it's going to be great if you care about that and of course there's a 5 million to 1 contrast ratio on this so everything about this display seems really really good the only potential downside depending on your taste is that the screen mounts over the edges a little bit and in some cases if you're looking at like light colors like white i've noticed that it kind of looks like the color fades a little bit towards the edges and also some people don't like that you might get accidental touches um when using the phone i actually have not experienced that it seems to have pretty good uh touch rejection on the edges here but again i've barely used this so i can't really comment uh very well on that but it does look nice i like how it looks i'm, I'm concerned of course with that um touch rejection and i i just find it interesting that oppo decided to keep doing that when samsung will kind of pioneer or started doing that uh, on phones has given up on that with the galaxy s20 ultra um, but either way, it's just a beautiful, beautiful display. I'm really excited to use it. I keep doing this. I hate, I hate software that uh, brings up a search when you swipe down instead of the notification shade. And so let's talk about software a little bit. So this is Oppo's Color OS 7.1 running on top of Android 10. And 
my last experience with Kong OS was Kong OS 6 and that was based on Android Pi of course so this has some improvements first thing most important to me is that the fact that Android 10 is dark mode and so Kong OS 7 is a dark mode now that it just applied out of the box I don't know if that's because it synced my settings from my other phones but I really appreciate having that. Camera mode, uh, the dark mode looks great. I also love what they did with the settings app. The wireframe colorful icons on top of the black background look really good. I like that a lot. And it's just, it's good to have that in general. I, I appreciate having that dark mode. But aside from that, it's very similar to what I've seen from Apple. And I'm not usually a fan of Android skins. I much prefer stock Android. Either way, there are some improvements. You see that the icons now uh, give you the option to choose. Why do I keep doing that? I'm never going to get used to this. Uh, the icons now give you the option to choose uh, between a few options. Before you just get this uh, uh, square with rounded circles style. Now you can just sh choose it out of the box. Either that the font one, the rounded squares. You get this pebble one that's kind of like the squircle style that you might have seen on some Pixel phones. And then you have this material style that tries to look like Google's uh, material design uh, guidelines. So I chose that one, but I don't think it's perfect because every app I download from the Play Store now looks like uh, just a square. And I don't know if that's the intended goal for all of them, but that's fine. And then there's this custom option. You can uh, find uh, custom icons on an app store of sorts. But either way, it, it feels a lot like Apple's Color OS used to feel. But it has that nice improvement of having dark mode and the design language overall seems nicer. I do like it a little better now. So I'm overall very excited to use this phone. I can't do it just yet because I'm currently reviewing another phone. But this thing in general looks very good. And one last thing I wanted to mention is that um, the haptic engine on this thing is incredibly sharp. I have never seen a, a, an haptic engine as sharp as this one. And I saw someone else praise it that. I probably wouldn't have thought about it if I hadn't seen that, but it is so sharp. When you type on this, you know how we, by default Android has this sort of vibration for when you press on keys. It doesn't feel like a vibration. It feels like an actual click of some sort. And it's so nice. It, it's honestly sort of amazing to me how sharp it is and how so, precise it is. I, I really, really like it. And of course, if it, vib if it vibrates for longer, then you're going to feel that as a vibration. But in, in that typing experience, the way it feels so, just like a click, it, it blew my mind just typing on it. And it's really, I'm really excited to review this phone. So that's going to be all for this video. I'll be reviewing this in the coming weeks. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.